Hi everybody, I'm here to present a paper in the area of high efficiency antimicrobial and antiviral coatings. My name is Victor Belio Gonzalez. I work for this company called Ginkoa in Liverpool, UK. And I presented this paper on behalf of my colleagues Dermot, Lara, Patricia, Tommaso, and Oyane, who now works at IK4 Technica. From the past year, we added extensive work in the area of antiviral coatings, so this is why we added to the original a paper on antimicrobial, we added the uh, antiviral aspect. And this work also will result in the presenting some data on the light activation of these coatings. First, I'm going to introduce Jinko to you. Jinko has been in business over, over 26 years. We are a manufacturing company. We manufacture components for the vacuum and coating industry. Our main business has been plasma sources, monitoring spotting sources, ion sources. We also manufacture diffusion cells for the introduction of and sublimation of gases from solids, for example, from sulfur and selenium. And also we manufacture sensors like oxygen sensors, selenium sensors, sulfur sensors, and optics sensors. This particular optic sensor looks at the gas that is in a particular environment, analyzes the gas and gives you some feedback and information about that process. Together with that, we complement it with controllers for such processes. In all, our customers will produce plasmas, will control plasmas, and will modify plasmas using different devices, the ability of uh, interlinking all these devices together in order to produce a particular type of coating or surface treatment. That will result in a product. That product will end up in a surface engineered surface component like a window, like a component in your car, in your phone, in your semiconductor device, from your pocket, everywhere to outer space, which use a vacuum coating technology. Jinkoa will manufacture two families of sources, the anodic ion sources and the cathodic sources. Within the cathodic sources, we do high current, low voltage sources like R sources. We do high voltage, low current sources like glow discharges. Our main activity has always been in the area of sputtering and we do specific sputtering for high beams applications. The main motivation for this paper was the concern about the healthcare associated infection and trying to limit the transmission of that infection through touch surfaces. This is estimated that about around 80% of all infection diseases are transferred by touch and breaking that cycle of transmission through touching surfaces is important. So what we try to do is through surface coating technology to break this cycle of transmission. Viral and microbial particles can be transferred by airborne and by active touching different surfaces which have been contaminated. We can pass that contamination to different surfaces and finally the microbe or viral particle can find a new host. Prior to COVID-19, the world has been traveling in a completely different direction. Display technology, smart applications have required mostly a touch surface to be active and as part of the interaction between a user and a system, a touch surface is became the common interface. In the hospital setting, the hospital associated infections are one of the leading causes of death. It's estimated that around 5% chance of contracting a infection while staying in hospital. In US alone, that is around 1.7 million every year that get infected in hospital, causing around 100,000 premature deaths, which in total is more than adding breast cancer and heart failure combined together. And this is one of the top 10 causes of death, for example, in the US. So in our work, we have been looking at vacuum coated technology as a way to introduce a surface with antimicrobial and antiviral properties. In specifically, physical vapor deposition techniques can be used among them thermal evaporation. But ones that we have been looking at have been arc evaporation and monitoring sputtering. When it comes to arc, the natural defects produced by ARC can be used as an antimicrobial and antiviral uh, advantage. 
and the use of different gas chemistry can help us to produce different types of coating. In regards to sputtering, this is a very flexible technique. It's able to produce smooth, rough coatings. The coating chemistry can be easily changed and functionalities can be easily adjusted. It is easy to move from one particular process condition to another process condition by class chemistry and by changing the nature of the target, which could be very, very varied. In ARC, by controlling the density of defects, it is possible to produce coatings with high density of defects and low density of defects. Sputtering has a very wide range of coating applications. It produces a, generally a low temperature deposition and you can achieve different levels of transparency. It is easy to see the need for antimicrobial antiviral protection in objects like handles which are used in areas of uh, heavy human traffic. There is a need for see-through applications where we need to add this antimicrobial antiviral activity like touch panel displays could be either inflexible so a roll to roll application is easy to apply or could be rigid displays also there are some 3D objects like these uh, operating goggles where the see-through element is very very important we have been working on see-through projects this is an example of a hospital here in Liverpool we have been coding several objects like uh, toys um, we have been coating visors and it's important for precision surgery to have a clear see-through and um, for that having anti-reflective and antiviral added property for the visor is important. Another area of see-through a medical environment is when applied to objects which are key instrumentation used in operating theatres and treatment rooms where the complexity of cleaning makes it very difficult for these objects to be used in conditions which are clean and sterile and sometimes this results to plastic bag them in order to use them in a safe way. The use of coating technology with antimicrobial antiviral properties obviously will be an improvement to the present conditions. So what makes the surface antimicrobial antiviral? Specifically we're going to look at electrochemistry and the electrochemistry by catalysis, oxidative catalysis. So the surface would be able to pass that oxidative effect into the bacteria and the virus, oxidizing, but the oxygen is mainly supplied by the atmosphere. One area that we aim in this paper was to add some photocatalytic activity in the oxidative reaction of bacteria and viruses. For that, generally UV has been used, but it's of interest to use visible because it's the biggest proportion of solar light and also is the biggest proportion in an office environment. As part of our test, we have been using a UV light in the in two different wavelengths. And we have been also using some visible light in, over a wider spectrum mainly centered around the green color. In order to evaluate the antimicrobial activity we have been using a modification of the Miller redox reaction. The Miller redox reaction of reducing sugar like fructose in contact with the oxidating agent like a dinitro salicylic acid will oxidize so the sugar will oxidize and the nitro salicylic acid will reduce will form an amino group which in contact with the aromatic ring will have a change in color from this yellow transform into this red color so by adding yeast to a test when our yeast is alive will consume the fructose so be less fructose and we will keep the natural color of the nitrosalicylic acid and when we have an antimicrobial activity that kills the yeast, that will leave more fructose in the solution and we will have then the reduction of the DNS, the nitrosalicylic acid, and we'll have the red color. So in addition, 
we add the test in UV and visible condition and the comparative reaction in darkness. So we see here some examples of coatings where there is no reaction in UV and there is some reaction to coatings which have a strong reaction, antimicrobial reaction on UV, producing different color. And we can compare that in darkness, there is no reaction at all. So when it comes to some coatings like our coatings with high level of defects and selective micro and nanotopography, we can see that it's not difficult to create some UV antimicrobial effect. It's not always the case, but we can create a specific chemistry in the and specific defect density to create UV activity in the uh, coating. And we can see when we compare the data in UV compared to darkness, that is a difference between the UV and the dark. Again, arc, due to the, this number of defects, is a typical good example to create highly efficient 99.999% bacteria kill in a 3.5 uh, hour period and the UV light. But our objective here is to create coatings which are able to produce this kind of photocatalytic effect in visible lighting conditions like the one that you will see in an office or in a hospital facility. So this is one example where we see there is no effect in that. So in our visible test, we achieve in some conditions to get a visible antimicrobial effect. And in within one hour, we were log three. We got log three results. This translated to a three hour test will mean log five results, which is extremely good. The results presented in the previous slide correspond to arc coatings produced in control defect density mode. So by controlling the number of defects, we were able to move selectively from one level of activity to another level of activity in the visible light. Similar results can be obtained with spotted coatings. In the visible light, we can observe photocatalytic antimicrobial activity. This is an example where we test in four hours darkness and we test three different type of samples. And we can see that in this sample, we have in darkness, we got some activity. In number two, we got a bit less activity. And in number three, we have almost no activity. By doing the test on the one hour invisible light, we see that the number one has increased the activity. The number two has also increased the activity with respect to darkness. And the number three now shows some activities compared to nothing in the darkness that demonstrates the photocatalysis in visible light of these coatings. We prepare some coatings based on copper, as copper has been demonstrated to you, have good antimicrobial and antiviral properties. So three different types of con uh, coatings were produced in this case. And in this case, in darkness, we can see that the sample one, sample two present good antimicrobial properties and sample three very little antimicrobial properties. By doing the test in under 15 minutes of visible light, we can see that there is an enhancement on properties on the sample number two. The dark is a darker color. And also we have an increase in performance on sample number three. Whereas sample number one doesn't show, although it has an activity in darkness, doesn't show an improvement with the visible light. So with all this, we can look at coatings and the performance in the area of UV photocatalysis, visible photocatalysis, and other properties that are important as a production and usage, like its coating transparency and substrate temperature. So mantle and sputtering, you have a bit of everything you can have. You can select coatings that produce a good UV performance, but you also have coatings that don't respond to UV. The same thing for on the visible, we were able to produce visible uh, photocatalysis uh, coatings uh, antimicrobial based on management sputtering with <coughs> very good transparency and with low temperature on the substrate. This is one example of um, what we call IC nano 
copper X and that we have performance, good performance in UV visible and also in darkness with good transparency and a low temperature. With the standard arc, the UV photocatalysis is more or less uh, easy to achieve. The visible generally is not so easy to achieve. The code transparency is an impossibility most of the times. And the temperature of the subject is typically high. With modifications of this arc in order to control the defect densities and other properties, it is possible to have a visible photocatalysis of those coatings. However, because the transparency is not there, and still the temperature of the subject will be very high. On our vital test, we will use the ISO 21702 2019 procedure in which a macrophage cell bonally is deposited on top of acre. Over there, we will dilute viral particles, and those viral particles, the aim is to have single viral particles on single cells. The single viral particle, which is initially deposited over our particular macrophage cell, will find its way into the cell, will replicate, will kill the cell, and then will propagate to the neighboring cells. In that way, we will extend and will produce and propagation and infection, and this propagation will produce some kind of plaques. In order to count and visualize the number of plaques, we need the staining. We can stain the dead cells or we can stain the living cells, and by staining, we can review the plaques, the number of plaques, which each one of them will correspond to our original single viral particle. For the viral test, we use transmissible gastroenteritis virus, which is a coronavirus, so we use it as a proxy for SARS CoV 2. This transmissible gastroenteritis virus affects the gastrointestinal tract in piglets mainly, but has a lower level of safety requirements, biosafety level 2. We tested two coatings which have two different levels in our Genqual Amelia scale the IC Nano Copper and the IC Nano Copper X. And in this test, the number of particles from the 500,000 original they were almost reduced to nothing and the efficiency was uh, above log 5 in the reduction of viral particles. For the IC Nano Copper X, the reduction of viral particles was 98.1%. Due to the high activity of these IC Nano Copper coatings, what we decided was to do instead of 2 hours test, do 5 minutes and 15 minutes test in order to count a higher number of viral particles surviving the test. So in the 15 minutes test, what we found is uh, only in one out of the three tests we could count any particles. In the five minutes test we could count more particles. So we estimated in the range of 99.98% uh, viral deactivation in, in the, with this coating and 97.7% viral deactivation in the five minutes test. Such conclusions, PVD coatings with antimicrobial antiviral properties can be produced. Coatings with UV and visible photocatalytic antimicrobial antiviral other properties are possible. The arc based coatings can be used in non transparent and less temperature sensitive applications with good antimicrobial antiviral results. A management pattern offers a wider range of applications from uh, opaque coatings to transparent applications. With, with good antimicrobial antiviral applications. And with this, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.